teacher talking sports what it does what it do how we live and we are just four days away from the nba regular season kicking off very exciting times so we're going to take a look at what john hollinger has done on the in the athletic recently he has posted each team's preview and a projected final record he's done three teams a day so over 10 days not including weekends each so let's take a look at how he projects the nba standings to go john hollinger was the former vice president of basketball operations for the memphis grizzlies a current senior nba colonist at the athletic and previously was a columnist and analyst for espn so let's take a look at how he projects the nba season to go since the Athletic is beyond a paywall. I'm not going to share uh, his articles, but let's get into it. So it was top six in the East, very tight uh, between the Celtics, 76ers, and the Bucks at the top. Of course, Celtics will be without Ime Adoka as their head coach, uh, but the reigning Eastern Conference champion, 76ers, made some great moves this offseason, including adding P.J. Tucker and DeAnthony Melton. Milwaukee Bucks course if the greek freak and chris middleton could stay healthy a lot of people think if middleton did stay healthy maybe they would have been the team representing the east in the finals the nets so many questions uh, let's see how much irving durant and simmons play together will durant stay happy the whole season toronto raptors fifth uh, much of the same team as last year other than really adding otto porter jr Cavs uh, avoid the plane according to hollinger of course, they made the blockbuster deal to acquire Donovan Mitchell. Uh, let's look at the four teams that he expects to make the play in in the East. So he's got the Miami Heat, the team who was the had the best record in the Eastern Conference last season, finishing seventh in the East. Lost PJ Tucker. Don't really have a suitable replacement for him as a starting power forward hawks eighth of course they added Dejounte murray uh to give them a dynamic backcourt alongside trey young chicago bulls ninth kind of faded the second half of last season after an excellent start and lonzo ball is definitely out to begin the year and it's really unsure how much time he will miss and the new york knicks who missed the play-in last season he's got him as the last playing team at 39 and 43 uh lottery bound teams so the five bottom teams in the east he's got the wizards one game behind the knicks for that last spot um in the playing tournament the hornets of course no miles bridges definitely hurts uh lamello may miss a few games to begin the season with an ankle injury pistons cade cunningham uh jaden ivy should be Give them a dynamic duo for many years to come, but they're still young at the moment. Indiana Pacers could trade off more pieces. Miles Turner, Buddy Heald, and the Orlando Magic. A lot of young talent. I actually expect them to finish better than 21-61, and 61, albeit I don't expect them to sniff the postseason. But, of course, Paolo Banchero, the first overall pick. Franz Wagner, first team all-rookie. Uh, let's look at the Western Conference, the top six. He has the LA Clippers leading the way at 54 and 28. Of course, a returning Kawhi Leonard. Let's hope Paul George can stay healthy. Added John Wall. Uh, let's see if we could get even 80% of the old John Wall. Uh, Golden State Warriors, one game behind him, the reigning NBA champs. Did lose some of their bench pieces, uh, but have a returning James Wiseman. Grizzlies third at 51 and 31. The Nuggets and the Suns tied for fourth and fifth at 50 and 32. Nuggets, of course, have the returning Michael Porter Jr. and Jamal Murray. Murray missed all last season. Porter missed most of last season. Zion Williamson, who missed all last season, has returned. And they have uh, Hollinger has these Pelicans as the last team to avoid the plane and make the postseason. The 7 through 10 play in. Yes, the Timberwolves did add Rudy Gobert, giving up a boatload of draft picks and some viable players, uh, but have them at 7th. The Mavericks, of course, made the Western Conference Finals last season, but lost Jalen Brunson. Who's their second best player? Spencer Dinwiddie, maybe. Uh, so Luka Doncic can't do it all. 
The Lakers, who missed the play in last season, he's got them in this year. And the Sacramento Kings, the longest uh, playoff drought in North American sports at 16 years and maybe counting. He's got them making the play in, but that's not necessarily the playoffs. And the five lottery-bound teams got the Trailblazers one game behind the Kings. I actually did my NBA predictions. I have the Trailblazers as the uh, last team to make the um, playing tournament. And four teams that really don't have any chance, really. The Utah Jazz still may trade off more pieces, such as Mike Conley, Jordan Clark Clarkson, Malik Beasley, uh, San Antonio Spurs, of course, traded DeJounte Murray. Houston Rockets and Oklahoma City Thunder, super young teams. Jalen Green looks like he could be a future all-star with the Rockets, while the Thunder unfortunately lost Chet Holmgren for the season. So what do you think about John Hollinger's predictions? If you do have The Athletic, I definitely recommend reading. Uh, de definitely recommend you reading all of his team previews. Uh, it was definitely fun to watch. And um, definitely... Uh, something you would want to get into. What do you guys think? Let me know your predictions for the NBA season. I can't wait as a Knicks fan, man. Hoping for a better year than last season. Um, loving the addition of Jalen Brunson. I think Isaiah Hartenstein will be an excellent piece off the bench as well. Don't forget to subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to subscribe. Like the video, share the video, hit the bell for notifications. I'm out.